All right, so Habakkuk chapter 1, this is what I read, the prophecy that Habakkuk the prophet received. Now notice, he said, how long, Lord, must I call for help? Maybe that's where you're at tonight. You're going, God, come on, when is this thing going to change? But God, you don't listen. Maybe that's what you feel. Uh, Or we cry out to you, but there's violence, but you don't even save. Why do you make me look at injustice? Come on, sounds like today. Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. There's strife and conflict. It abounds. Therefore, the law is paralyzed and, and justice never seems to prevail. There's a laptop that is out there, but what is going to happen to it? That's uh, the HTL Hank translation. <laughs> the wicked hem and the righteous so that the justice is perverted. But now watch this. God hears us from the prophet and he says, all right, let me adjust your perspective. Notice the answer from the Spirit of God to the prophet. God says, look at the nations and watch. You're going to be utterly amazed. And we know that obviously the Messiah has to do with with this prophecy. But also it can be relevant to today. It has a prophetic narrative that God is saying, hey, it, it relates to today. Look, you're going to be amazed. I'm going to do something in your day, though you would not believe, even if it's told you. It's going to be so great. And I want you to know that how things are now is not how they are always going to be. And God has told us this. So I want to look at the first slide, slide one. And I want our panel to get ready. God gives a prophecy, February 16th of 2023. And he talks about how there is going to be a restraint brought by the Spirit of God. God says there's a restraint it is not of your might. It's not even of your power, but it's by my spirit. So, I mean, you know, God is the one that restrains. Mm-hmm. And it's the same restraint that I gave to Israel when they pers- were being pursued. What did I do? I brought a pillar of cloud and fire. It was my glory that restrained. Now, look at your history in the Bible. When Egypt and Pharaoh were pursuing a nation, what did God do? He used his glory obviously to restrain and to keep the pursuit of the most powerful uh, nation at that time militarily from being able to touch his people yeah. and God saying if I did it for them I'm doing it again so he's bringing that example and he says now look you're going to see great shakings for even now this nation shall shake upon the east coast in the middle even in the place of deceit and upon the west now it's important because immediately your lightning fast mind thinks okay this must be earthquakes well maybe it is God didn't specifically say the soil. He said shakings. Okay, look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 27. Look at what God says about shakings. God says, yet once more, I signify the removing of those things that are shaken, of things that are made, that things which cannot be shaken will remain. In other words, there's going to come a shaking. God's going to shake everything that can be shaken. And only that which God wants or what needs to be is going to remain. Now let's go on to the next prophecy and then we're going to, we're going to get into some comments here. Why is this happening? Look at what uh, God says again in the next slide. Because I'm going to intensify the shakings. And how many believe we're, we're seeing shakings? It's not just, I'm not talking earthquakes, but listen, there's a whole lot of shaking going on. It's only going to intensify. Now, after God said this, that the shakings would intensify, it's interesting that they had that big uh, earthquake in Turkey. Do you all remember that? And he says, I'm showing the earth that I'm walking among it, that I will have my way in this hour. And why? Why is he going to do this? I'm having my way and my outpouring to reset it and to bring a reversal, but also to restrain the hand of the enemy. And lastly, I say, you've cried and you have said, God, help us. And so I've heard your SOS. I mean, SOS is a cry for help. And I answer your help. I will answer your cry with this. There will be shakings, obvious proofs. That's the O of the SOS and swift changes, says the living God. Now, let's talk for a moment because, Anthony, you found a prophecy today from February 14th of 2018. And we just went through Uh, a horrific shooting that the Lord told us that we needed to up our prayers back in 2018. I want you to talk about this for a minute, Anthony, and Terry, you're there as well. This would be, uh, I don't know if they have a slide for this one, but this was kind of last minute, but go ahead, Anthony, tell us about this prophecy. Um, Do you have it by a slide or can you, 
We should have that up by okay. slide. But before they put that up, sure. I noticed something interesting that you had uh, just referenced uh, in that last Bible verse about things that can be shaken and things that cannot be shaken. Well, I just heard from the Holy Spirit. Well, that speaks of separation. So what we're seeing right now is a divine separation where God is sifting the things that are not of him to make way and room to build upon the things that are of him. So that's why you're seeing so many different events that are happening. So you had the collapse of the banking, of some of the banks and the financial system. You know, you've had other things that have happened politically with certain leaders being removed, which we'll talk about um, a, a little bit later. But I see right now what God is doing, what he's trying to show us is there are shakings that are happening that are signs of a divine separation that he is doing in this time. And it's happening in, you, in the prophecy you just read on February 16th of 2023 in four key areas, the East Coast, the Middle, which is the Midwest, D.C., and upon the West. Now, speaking about the prophecy from February 14th of 2018, if they have that ready, they can pull that up now. Um, but if not, I'll just go ahead and read it. But it says, there shall be outbursts of violence for the things that will be exposed. So again, that's speaking of a separation. The things that are not of God are coming to light for everyone to see. This can be stopped, says the Lord, for you are not wrestling against flesh and blood. You are wrestling against the spirit of anarchia, a spirit of lawlessness that seeks to divide this land. It's again, so that another separation and to make you think that is another issue that what is at hand of a working of a spirit of darkness. Listen to the secrets that I say to you now. The same spirit of lawlessness from hell, they have said, not only shall we bring violent, tornadic activity by way of storms. Now, that's interesting because we've had numerous reports of tornadoes and violent windstorms that have taken place across the south, the southeast, and as well as the Midwest. And it says from hell, uh, not only shall we attack the school. So there you go. But we shall fill their streets with violence. But this is not enough, says the Lord. Listen to the words so that you may pray. And I want to stop right there, Pastor Hank, because I think a lot of times what, we, what happens as believers in our human nature is to stop short of the redemptive plan. We always want to look at maybe the things that have happened that have been doom and gloom. We want to look and stop and say, oh, we can't believe this tragedy happened, which it's, it's sad. But God is giving us a, a clue and a reminder of the power that we have as believers to stand in the gap as intercessors for this nation, for our families, for the schools, for the children. If we would only stop and humble ourselves and pray, what can we do as a nation to turn things around? Mm -hmm. Amen. So now I want to talk about yes. the next section. So we talked about the SOS, God saying swift, uh, swift. Uh, there's going to be shakings, obvious proofs, and swift changes. That's the SOS that God is answering. And one of the ways he's going to do it is there's going to be, God called out different regions. He talked about the East Coast in the middle, uh, Washington, D.C. in the West. And so I want to go to a prophecy from June 1st of 2023 that specifically tells us to look to Florida. And, and I think these are important to bring up these different states. We're going to talk about those of you that are in California. You need to hear what God's saying about California. Because if these things are coming to pass in California, it's connected to the big picture of what he's doing in America. And if you're in another country, like Matthew said, Canada. Listen, there's prophecies that the Lord has said about Canada. You can go out to hankandbrenda.org. And as a result... Um, there is, uh, you, you know, prophecies about Canada. But let's, let's look at Florida real quick. It's January 1st of 2023. And God says this. He says, and there will be laws, pay attention, to Florida, for they will pave a way in many in, in, of what I speak. For they will say, we will not allow this with children in our state. We will not allow this on the Internet. We will not allow this on television in our state. And God says, you say, oh, that's crazy. The Lord says, watch, for in Florida you have keys for a purpose, because you don't just have it in the natural, you have it to unlock over this land, and there will come laws that will protect the children, because the scales of justice and righteousness are in my hands, God says. Now, look at, uh, if they'll put up the slide four, look, look at this real quick, you know, this is very important. 
DeSantis, it says, strips Disney World of its self-governing power in Florida. There's a new sheriff in town. Now, Anthony, you want to uh, maybe comment about this particular slide, but also about the need for, for prophecy. But why don't you comment on this one? Well, I think it's interesting that it said in that prophecy that Florida would have the keys. So God, you know, with his uh, play on words, the Florida Keys, but also the keys to the nation in terms of legislative power and being the example to set the rule of law in this nation. And the first thing that we highlight is one of the major milestones that the Florida government just went ahead and did is they stripped Disney of their self-governing power, which, let's be honest, Disney should have never had that kind of power to begin with. How do you let a corporation have that much control um, and, and, and independence in a particular state? So now DeSantis has pretty much enacted, um, and Terry can probably speak this a little bit better than I could, but has an, enacted a governing authority over Disney, which basically says, hey, we can come in anytime, do spot checks. We can make sure you're, you're adhering to certain things. And I think it's going to lead to a lot of exposure uh, of some of the things that Disney has been doing, which has been harming the children. So it's just a step and, a, and a, a sign of what God has already prophesied about Florida's role in a governmental authority Amen. over this nation. Amen. Terry, what do you think regarding, uh, we have on the next slide there, talks about lawmakers, and Matt, maybe you could comment about this, proposed state control, uh, and I have the FHSAA, yeah, whatever yes. that is, as a way to allow pregame prayer. Any comments, Terry, on that? And then, Matt, you could follow up. Yeah, absolutely, Pastor. You know, that's actually a really big step because essentially the that's like here in Nebraska, that's our S, uh, NSAA, which just yep. kind of oversees yep. all the high school sports. Mm -hmm. And so that being able to have control over that, they're going to now allow pregame prayer in, in those football games or even volleyball, basketball, it doesn't matter. Sport, any kind of sporting event, that would, that would open the door to allow for pregame prayer. Wow. And so that is huge because there was actually a Supreme Court case. Wow. Uh, yeah, no, hope, give a round of applause for that. That's awesome. You know, Terry, I just hope that that doesn't affect the SEC, you know, and they start praying prayers that they beat us or something. You've know? you got, <laughs> yeah. you got to get Nebraska back. Yeah. But, but anyway, anything you want to say on that, Matt? Well, I, I think that's important. You know, and we just mentioned, um, the Florida government and, and, and yeah. DeSantis, um, he actually just revealed um, recently as well that uh, por pornographic books were being removed from schools and Praise different God. libraries as well. Because um, there was, yes, Come on, there was videos that had leaked out of teachers trying to teach that stuff, and it was graphic. I mean, I, I don't even want to re research it, look at it. And DeSantis said, enough is enough. This is, this is done. We're not doing this. This is not allowed. We're going to remove this. And to the, the, the part about the Athletic Association in Florida, this is huge because, listen, now we're having kids, high school kids, that are praying before games. This is how it should be. When yeah. I played, when Jonathan played, yeah, right. it was like a requirement. It yeah. was, it, yeah, and, and it's like, where have we gone in the last, I mean, I've been out of high school since, what, 2011, 12? So I'm like, where is time gone? And now I'm like, I've gone to high school games. I've coached high school games. And there are times it's like prayer has been pushed to the back burner. Yeah, right. No more of that. No more of that. <laughs> this is true. happening again. And I'm excited to see, like, listen, Florida is taking a huge stand and it's time that other states start doing the same thing now. Wow. And I'm excited for what God is doing because this is a huge win. It is. And listen, we saw what the prayer did at the Bengals-Bills game. Okay? In the NFL level. The highest level possible. Yeah, right. So now, if it's getting to that level and we saw what it did to a country, imagine if more high schools, more college universities, we start seeing it in other sports now. Yeah. Okay? Let it happen. Shoot. Let it happen at the Final Four this weekend or something. Let somebody start getting a word and a revelation and let there be prayer. Let somebody shoot a game-winning shot I that's know. a man of God or they something. They should have had prayer you know? for the refs at the Creighton game. But I that's agree a with story. that. But yeah. Anyway, no. so God says this. I think you're going to like this. This is slide five. Then there shall come something unusual in Illinois. You shall be known as Illinois. <laughs> For a noise shall rise up out of you from Chicago that shall throw your mayor out. <laughs> <laughs> God said it a year and something in advance, man. And I knew when it came out of my mouth, I was like, all right, just watch. Because I knew that God brought that mayor into the court of heaven. That's what prophets uh, will do if they have a governing anointing. And it's a very dangerous place to be if that happens. 
It means God's had enough. So he says, and a noise shall rise up out of you, Chicago, that shall throw your mayor out. And a new mayor shall arise, and a great reform shall come unto you, Illinois. Because there shall be a noise of, watch this, con- conservative. Terry, help me pronounce that word. Conservativism. There you go. I still didn't say it right, and I don't even Conservative care. Conservativism. And don't write on the thing, how come Hank can't pronounce words? I don't know. Well, God, clearly God I'm a doesn't. Cartoonist, and I write books. There you go. Clearly, the Lord right. doesn't care about Jer- grammar. Jerry, as in Illinois. <laughs> Illinois. Yeah, I got, there, the Lord son, spoke. You're so okay. Good. There you the go. The Lord Maybe that's spoke. Why. So, if you got a problem with what yeah. he just said, take it up with Jesus. You know what? Okay. I actually okay. had the Holy Spirit tell me one time. He said, "Hank, he said, I want you simple because I will speak yes. very." It's good. Profound, confounding things if you will stay simple. That's what he told me. <laughs> wow. Now, let, look at the slide six. This is really interesting for the fulfillment of this. This, this article uh, from the next slide, notice how many years that uh, Lightweight had been in there. Okay? Forty years. Forty represents an end of a generational cycle. That's so good. Think about what happened when, when after 38 years, 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, God raised up a whole new generation of somebody that was going to establish what God ultimately wanted. So I think that, you know, for the Lord to call him out uh, in what February 6th of 2022, and then here a year later it happens, God ain't playing. And this is why I want you to be encouraged. If the Lord will call this stuff out, and he's called a lot of things out, you just have to be patient. Yes. Okay. All right, let's go on to the next one. So you got the east, now you got the middle Illinois. Now let's go to D.C. Now let's look at uh, slide seven. This is January 20th of uh, 2010, okay? Um, Anthony, is there anything on this one? that You pulled this one up and found it from 2010. What was it that really stuck out to you on this one? Well, really it was the the part in the red that I want to read because... Yeah, go ahead and read it and then kind of explain it. Sure. Okay, so this is January 20th, 2010. Again, just reading the red part there. It says, so there is a pivotal event coming again, and it shall be found in this decade, and I will cause a wind from the heavens, not from the direction of the earth, but from the heavens, and it will blow across Washington, D.C., and blow across the Congress, and blow across the Senate. Surely I will blow upon the legislation, and as quickly as it came into signing, and kicked out. Legislation is getting blown apart. Part, and it's not having an effect. They're, I find it interesting that in January 20th of 2010, God was already revealing of the things that were to come and the things that the enemy would try, but what God would already do to bring about a reversal. Wow. All right. That's really good. So you're seeing shakings in Florida and look at what's happening. Good is coming out of it. We talked about with, you know, what they're doing with the Disney and, and with the prayer Look at what's happened in Chicago in the middle. Now you're seeing D.C. Let's look at March 30th, 2018. This is slide 10. And I'm saying that for our great people back there. Let's give a hand clap to those that are working very hard back there. And it's just easier to do it that way. I could give them hand signals, but you know, always get those goofballs out there on social media. Think that, you know, they call me a mason and I don't even know anything about concrete. So, as I said before, so, you know, I don't understand why they would say that, you know. Or you're part of the illumination or whatever, you know, so whatever. So you can't do any hand signals, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, what does this mean? Those of you that just look for a reason always to criticize. What does yeah, that mean? Right. You know what it means? Get a life. That's what it means. All right. Well, baseball so, opening days tomorrow, and, they, you know, I mean, I guess they shouldn't alive. watch sports and baseball tomorrow because, right. you know, they want to do all those signs and <laughs> yeah. practically pick their nose, That's you know? Good. All right. Let's go to the next slide, son, <laughs> talking about baseball. All right. Slide 10. Look at this one. March 30th, 2018. Now watch United States for I have not forgotten you. While they bicker and they fight like cats and dogs in Washington, D.C. in your politics, those who oppose, those who have legislated unrighteously, and have brought sickness and disease and perversion to this land, they shall be shown the door. I'm telling you, this is going to happen in America. You're going to see it as we keep nearing 2024. You are going to see, God, I'm telling you, there are people that are going to be shown the door. They're already happening. Some of them are stepping down. Uh, watch this. In other words, watch what should be known as the great removal. This that I speak shall affect the politics, not only in the nation, but in the nations of the earth, as tyrants are being removed and shall be removed. Yes. Anthony, since that prophecy, has there not been, this is 2018, this has been four years ago, practically to the date, 
tomorrow being the 30th. How many removals do we know of, Terry? Maybe you can tell me. But, but come on, think about all the, the different ones that are being removed or, or they've stepped down. And we're going to look at a prophecy about uh, different ones that have resigned. And God says, I'm doing this to heal the nations. Uh, Anthony, do you have a comment on that? Well, just like you said, Pastor, and it's not just the number of removals, but it's the people that are being removed. I mean, these are yeah. high ranking leaders, uh, world leaders, people who are in high positions, not just in government, but world banks, um, uh, committees that are international and have huge influence. So you're talking about major shakeups that are happening around the world right now. Wow. I want us to look, talking about that, Anthony, I want us to look at slide 11. It's January 1st of this year. Notice what God says. And this prophecy is already starting to be seen. This is very interesting prophecy. And I'd like for the panel to kind of weigh in on this. Um, Notice what it says. Okay, you guys are doing a great job, by the way, uh, back there. Okay, it says, watch what I do with your executive office. Watch what I do with your legislative office and branches. Watch what I do, God says, with your judicial branches of government and how I tip the scales. Watch how I reset and how I will reestablish and bring restoration unto your nation, United States. Therefore, notice what he goes after first. I will shake your Senate. So notice he mentions them first. What are you noticing happening right now in our Senate? Now he gives you a clue. As there is three in your year. All right. Panel, there are three curiously weird stuff that has kind of happened. And we're only three months into 2023 with three in the Senate. Tell us, Terry, Anthony, what's going on and who are they? Yeah, we've had, like you said, Pastor, we've had three, and it's been really interesting because they've been really one after another. We first had Diane Feinstein, um, that she was out about the end of February for, for shingles, I believe, and then she hasn't come back yet. Um, and we also have John Fetterman, and he was February 15th, and he, you know, he, also hasn't come back yet. We don't. Yeah, we haven't Stenerman. heard anything from him. No, what's up? <laughs> yeah, and then the last one was uh, Mitch McConnell, and that was March eighth that he fell and was is, has been out. And again, no one has really heard from him either. And so it's interesting that we have these three senators that are gone. And I, I like that prophecy, Pastor, that you just read, where it talks about the tipping of the scales. Because yeah. if you remember back in November, how all all the liberals were so excited because in the Senate they had this fifty one forty nine majority, and it was going to be amazing. And now, oh, now all of a sudden we have two that are gone. And I think people, I want to encourage people too to remember that the Senate, the average age of the senator is, of the senators here is 65. And so there's a lot of them that are in and out for different medical procedures and things like that. And so those numbers are always shifting. So to have people, these three wow. out for a significant period of time is huge because it has a big impact on when they're voting for confirmations, when they're voting wow. for legislation. Those numbers now are not the same as they were back in November. And because God's tipping the scales. Isn't that interesting? And, but, but look at this, you know, to your point here, I thought was really good. It says that there are three. It says, I'll shake your Senate. So it's the first thing he's talking about. And there is three in your year. Notice he didn't say, and, and normally, you know, if, if prophets are going to miss it anywhere, it's in the area of timing. But, and I always hate it whenever God puts a timing on something, because then, you know, people always misinterpret it. But he said it, and look, it's already happening. And there shall be what? Three swift moves that shall come through your Senate. So God's not done. I find it interesting. He calls out three in your year, and there's coming three swift moves. And it's in context of the balance or the tipping of scales. And I think we haven't seen the end of this. Um, Now, let's keep reading. And God says there'll come a great exposure of one that I will show, and there's yet another that aided them in things that will follow them and now expose them. And watch what will happen in your Senate to tip the scales. Watch what will begin to take place as others begin to shift from left to the middle, the left to the right. And God says, I'll show you that, that they will not have their agenda in the land. Look at the next slide of the news articles. So this is slide 13. Look at the shake. Uh, this is Fetterman and Feinstein are absent. They leave Senate Democrats without an outright majority. Makes me want to cry. (laughs) The next one, Mitch McConnell hospitalized after a fall at D.C. Hotel. I don't know. I think he's like 140 or something. But, you know, 
And again, somewhere they need to they need to bring things into balance. So you're seeing shakings on the east that's bringing about good things. Shaking in D.C. is going to bring about good things. Shakings in the middle uh, is going to bring about good things. Now let's talk about California. We don't want to camp around too much in California because I really want to show you a prophecy that is really going to encourage you of eight specific signs. And I want to talk to you about a prophecy before we end that was here uh, it was a couple weeks ago where the Lord called out the devil. How many were here? Oh my God, you could feel like thunder was just hitting it. And I want to talk about it because it talks about Donald. Um, are you still on Facebook? Those of you that are watching, yeah, there's like, I bet I don't want to say his name, um, because I don't want them to, 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 uh, have to kick you off. So I'll just say, uh, the number four and the number five. Sounds like a 45. Okay, there you go. So we'll talk about that. Now, I want to go to slide 14. Let's talk about California. Maybe you live out in California. You've got to hear what God is saying. This is from uh, 2018. And the, the Spirit of the Lord says, but listen now, says the Spirit of God, for there's something new that is taking place. Look to California. I laugh at you, California, when they say you'll be divided three ways. Ha! For they say the big one is coming, and so they speak of a fault line. And some have been foolish to say, California, you shall break away and go into the sea. Listen, you are looking at the wrong fault line. For there is a fault line that is seated in the seats of your government in California. And they speak loudly, and they brought an agenda that is contrary to my will. Now look and see my fault line. Look to my shaking. For yes, there shall come a split, and there shall come a dividing, but it's my work. Not of the state, but the state of what California has been. So God's saying he's bringing this dividing. Now, show Genesis 1, verse 14. Um, oh, by the way, uh, Anthony's saying Mitch McConnell fell at Trump's hotel. That's interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah. Gen- and, 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 and Trump had nothing to do with it. Genesis 1, 14, because they blame everything on that poor guy. God said, let there be light. In the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. So notice what, what God did. He divided the light from the darkness. So sometimes when God creates a split, it's to expose the darkness and establish what is the true light of the day. And so that's what we're seeing. But I want you to look at, and this one's also powerful in California. Um, this one is happening. This is June 24, 2018, slide 15. It says, I will cause it to rain upon the places where there has been fire. How many know California's had a lot of fires? Have they not had rain? Watch this. And they will ask, what is this? It seems as though the rain cannot stop. They're experiencing that right now. And God says, there is a new thing I'm doing in New California. And I'm going to shake those who have shaken their fist at me. And I'm going to shake those who've gone forth with an agenda that's contrary. And I'm going to shake some of those who have held seats of authority uh, not so in this new se- season, says the Spirit of God. California, listen, you're going to break away. Yes, you will. You'll break away from liberalism that has held you. For I say to you that you shall cu- there shall come a new thing, and it will happen over you, California, and I'll do it. Now, listen to what he says. You in California, woman, it's 2018, <laughs> you will not speak in the house. You will lose your voice, and there shall not be another that shall arise. Let's show slide 16 for our pleasure, please. (laughs) First of all, California is facing its 12th uh, atmosphere river this winter following a historic drought. Okay, how many know God also talked about November 27th that there would be three signs that he would bring to this nation. One would be rain out in California, rain in the drought areas that would break the drought and would be in abundance. How many know that was November 27th of 2022 that happened? Then he said snow this year would be measured in feet, November 27th, 2022. How many have seen that? Then he said the third thing, look to the sky. And he said, what is this disruption that shall happen among your airwaves? How many remember the airlines? Uh, shortly, like three weeks after that, those were three specific signs. But show the slide again. Uh, there's a, I don't know, they're calling it a bomb cyclone. But watch this one right there. Nancy blah, 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 steps down. <laughs> Pelosi steps down. They threw water on her and she just <laughs> melted. Nancy Pelosi stepped down as the House Democrat leader after two decades. Wow. <laughs> 